Joining me also from London is Dennis McShane, a former Labour Minister for European Affairs. Uh, Dennis, thank you again for your time. As a former government minister, take us through what happens now as Charles assumes the throne, since the monarch plays a very important constitutional role, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yes and no. I, mean, she, 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 I keep saying she, she, he, he. Got, got to get used to saying God save the king. Um, he, King Charles, is now the head of state. So he meets every week with the prime minister. He appoints the prime minister. The last thing the queen did was to uh, uh, do the kissing of the hand ceremony. It really is that. I mean, I've been involved in it. You kneel down uh, when I was a privy councillor and gently brush your lips on her gloved hand, and that's it. You're you're appointed, whether it's privy councillor or a big uh, figure of state or indeed the monarch. Uh, Liz Truss did that on Tuesday, and also the Queen said goodbye to Boris Johnson, and I just wonder, as one of the very last things she did, if she uh, wasn't glad to see probably the worst prime minister in my memory in her lifetime go away. So, um, King Charles now has to prepare, obviously, for the farewell moments to the Queen, the ceremony of the funeral, and again, uh, who's invited? I imagine everybody from President Biden and to President Macron, uh, President Zelensky, the Emperor of Japan, all sorts of incredibly world important people will want to be there. But, for example, will Harry's wife, Meghan Markle, and all the other royal children went up to Balmoral with their spouses. She was left behind in London uh, because, of course, she's made remarks about how she was received in, in terms of her race, but not by the Queen, but by the kind of the giant bureaucracy of the uh, 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 royal palace. So and then he just settles down, the usual uh, routine of royal visits, except uh, he's, he's not a young man. Um, uh, so they'll have to organise those a bit more gently and carefully for him. Uh, she was pretty fit. Um, you know, she ate modestly, she drank modestly, she took exercise and so on. Um, and, um, uh, uh, but he is, you know, he, he, he looks his years, let's put it that way. Now, the Queen's passing could not come at a worse time politically for the government, could it, Dennis? <laughs> Yes, you know, and yes. I mean, the government governments have been very up and down in recent years. Uh, it said that the Queen wasn't very happy with Brexit when she had to read the Queen's speech. That's a big thing the monarch does once a year, read out the government programme. She arrived at uh, the Palace of Westminster with a bright, a large blue hat with tiny little yellow flowers. And everybody said uh, that, uh, oh gosh, that's her sending a signal that she's pro-European. She certainly spoke French very well. She liked France. She liked talking to French presidents, especially President Mitterrand. They got on very well because they were the two surviving heads of state when he was president until 1995 who'd actually been involved in the Second World War. But she wore the uniform of the British Army at the end of the Second World War as a young uh, 18 or 19 year old repairing uh, military vehicles. So she likes France. She loves the horse, the horse racing tradition of France. I mean, she's a great sort of, sort of equestrian. Um, and Charles, I mean, you can read a text in, in poor French, but I don't think he can have a chatty conversation the way that the Queen did. Anyway, that's over. He takes up his royal duties. Uh, we have 10 days of mourning. The football matches are cancelled for this weekend. There was actually going to be a big demonstration tomorrow in London to rejoin the European Union, uh, which has been cancelled. Uh, and then you know, the country gets ready. We assume a coronation probably in the warmer springtime. Uh, and 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 then uh, King Charles is in charge for as long as he's there. Now, you mentioned there the Queen's relationship with François Mitterrand, but, you know, it's fascinating when you think of a woman who's dealt with 15 prime ministers, and one of the relationships which is talked about the most is the fairly close relationship she had with the then Labour Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. They certainly didn't expect to hit it off as well as they did, did they? 
That's that's right. I mean, the Queen became Prime Minister. Sorry, the Queen became the Queen, the monarch, uh, in uh, 1952, crowned in 1953, when Winston Churchill was still there. My goodness, he went straight. He was elected a member of Parliament in the time of Queen Victoria. Uh, and, and then it was a succession of Conservative Prime Ministers, uh, during the 50s up to 64, when she, you know, she's already approaching 40. And suddenly comes this guy, Harold Wilson, from the north, the Labour guy, but very, very cultivated, very, very easy to talk to. And the Queen was very intelligent. She really did enjoy um, foreign affairs. She reads all the papers of state, all the dispatches of the, the uh, bastards said in intimate stuff about the countries they are posted to. And Wilson... Uh, just was able to talk to her, make her feel at, at home. I think the other people before were sort of much older, uh, very aristocratic conservatives like Harold McMillan and Anthony Eden and uh, Sir Alec Douglas Hugh would be nice people for sure, her class. But Wilson was just a breath of fresh air, a breath of modern Britain, which she uh, had been rather cut off from. So she liked Harold a lot. Dennis McShane, it's been lovely speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.